Harper Flight got a uh, basketball court behind our set and where there will be a couple of games being played tonight. Uh, one of those is going to feature uh, your son's high school team. Sharif's going to be playing on that floor tonight, huh? Yeah, he is. Uh, he told me, you know, he's look, looking forward to playing in front of you guys. And as a father, I'm very proud of him. You know, Kenny could attest to this. You know, guys try to follow in our footsteps. And he's a good kid. And uh, he earned a scholarship to Arizona. So I'm just very proud of him. I mean, you and I talk all the time, Shaq, about before before you became an NBA player and back when I went to San Antonio and we did a feature on you because you were the most talked about guy in, in the league. And all of a sudden, here you are watching your son who in a matter of a couple of years or so may be, may be playing in the NBA. You may be working this job and talking about him. I mean, it, it seems crazy. You know, it's... Uh... You're right, it, it is crazy because as a father, I never really forced him to play. It's sort of like a deja vu experience. You know my father very well. Never forced me to play. He just said, hey, this is what you got to do. This is how you got to act. You have to do certain things. And he really works out hard and he really wants to make it. And you know, he loves guys like LeBron and T Mac and Kobe. So, you know, him growing up and, you know, watching me play and watching me do certain things is just amazing that at a young age, especially 17, 18, now he can just go out and you know, reenact what he sees. And we got more on this uh, father-son story, Shaq and Sharif. Uh, we want to rerun something that ran on NBA TV beyond the paint, uh, a, a profile of Sharif from Matt Weiner. Get on the block. One bounce, you are O'Neal. You're not going to get two bounces. They're coming quick. Demand it, demand it. Oh. Bang it, bang it. Punisher at the rim. There you go. At 6'10", and still growing, Sharif O'Neal has the build, the skill, and yes, the pedigree of a can't-miss star. And yet, both he and his father say a life in hoops was never a certainty. I try to stay out of his way and let him figure it out because I tell him all the time, we don't need basketball. We need lawyers. We need doctors. We need hedge fund people in our family. We need people that can do stuff like that. I've always liked basketball, but I always like watching it more than playing it. Now it's the other way around. Before the potential pro emerged, the fan, born five months before the first of his father's four NBA titles, had an incredible run. I remember from Miami on, instead of watching the games, I was usually in the family room playing with the other kids. But Phoenix, I was always watching the games. Celtics and Cavs, I was always watching the games. That was me and my older brother, Miles. And LeBron came up to us, and he was like, watch this. And he stole the ball and then dunked. And then he like looked at me and my brother and that's probably my best memory. When I was younger, I didn't know what was going on. I thought people were taking pictures with him just because he was tall. As I got older, people were just like, oh, you're Shaq's son, can I have a picture with you? And I just never understood why they wanted a picture. Not only does Sharif get it now, it was the attention an internet highlight video brought him that raised his interest in the game. Suddenly, wherever he played, gyms were packed. As I actually like the way that felt when I was playing. I like the attention I was getting from my family. I always had a little bit of skill, but then that was the first time they saw me play in a real competition AAU game. And like, I actually kind of like playing basketball. I like making people around me feel good, and that's when I fell in love with it. The game reciprocated, and soon the same Blue Blood programs who recruited Shaq in the late 80s were after Sharif. He's aware that being the son of a Hall of Famer has its perks. After all, not every kid gets to declare his college choice on Inside the NBA. Welcome to Arizona, Sharif. Yes, my baby boy committed to Arizona. I'm a proud father. Arizona, I love the school. The staff treats me like family. They went on a visit. But there is a price to pay for Sharif's hoop heritage. You think Shaq is big? Try getting out of his shadow. He has a gift and a curse. The gift is he's very talented, very humble, very smart, but the curse is his father was a bad mofo. You know, he's going to have to live up to that, and he's also going to have to, you know, create, create his own life. I think I'm judged very differently. I feel like people, like, this is Shaq's son. He has to be good. I just play the best that I can. I don't really try to impress anybody, just try to be happy with myself. So I don't know if people are using me for the name or using me for the skill. That's just probably the curse part about it. Well, I hold back a lot of advice. I just try to teach him the basic things like criticism can either make you dwindle or can make you excel. So I tell him criticism is just a part of our business. Use criticism as motivation. That's what I did. The Hall of Famer has coached Sharif on the court as well, mostly in private, but also last summer at an AAU tournament. 
unlike the drill sergeant stepfather who raised him, Shaq says he's taken a softer That's approach. Wrong. Me? For, for 19 years in the NBA, when I had a bad game, I'd get a call. What the hell are you doing? You playing soft? I don't, I don't do that with him. If he has a bad game, just say, hey, man, can't have two bad games in a row. I have to adjust to, to, to each child. The next one I'm teaching is called the Kevin McHale. You know who Kevin McHale is? No. What? No. Say it again? I don't know. That's your homework today. That Kevin McHale move took me about seven years to master. I just taught him that today. Oh, got him. Yes, bang. I do something that is legendary. I'll show you. Come here, Sharif. We had a tournament in Las Vegas. This is my first time coaching. We won the AAU championship. Been down. So when I make a mistake and I know everybody's looking, this is how I talk to my kid. Gotta get some rebounds, right? And it works. He does the fake yell thing and people that can't hear him think he's actually yelling, but he's like, you're doing good even though you're not having your best game, just keep going. I mean, that kind of talk, he used to yell at me, but I feel like when he yelled, I wasn't in my game. But now since he talks, I can just focus. When he's not coaching, Shaq's presence at a game isn't hard to detect. In fact, there's no ignoring it. It's like loud. It's not like an NBA game. We had a game at my school's, our rivalry game, and it was like 1,200 people there. Our gym holds like 900, and there was people on the baseline. Both sides of the court were filled, and he came in late after the gym was packed, and then everybody was going crazy. People started running down from the stand trying to take pictures, running through the court during our warm-ups, and it was kind of crazy. And it's fun when he's there. Sometimes it takes the attention off me, brings it on him, so I feel like that helps a little bit. And as long as he's playing, Sharif knows he'll be identified first and foremost as Shaq's son. If he sticks with it and, you know, fulfills his dream, I'll be a happy dad. If he doesn't make it to the NBA, I'll still be a happy dad because we will always have something to fall back on. I will, I will always stress education. I see people comment on my stuff like, oh, he's only considered this good because he's Shaq's son. So I want people to just say that I earned what I did in the league. I'm making it like a promise that I'm going to do a lot of damage in the league and do anything I can just to be the best I can be. So I just want people to tell me that I earned it.